On today's show, we're talking about projects we're working on, what we're reading, and possibly even an extension of our business. We're completely candid, and the questions that each of us ask, even though they're the same questions, we had completely different answers. You're gonna love the show. Check it out right now. All right, Jason, I got a question for you. Uh, what's one thing that you've read recently that's had an impact and that you can <clears> think about? So, you know, obviously we try to read a few books a year. I'd love to read a lot yeah. more than that. I'd like to read a few books a month, but it just happens. So we, just, you know, we have it set up that just have a goal to read, you know, a book every two, three months just to be just to be good. So the last book I read that I finally finished was uh, The Sale of the Lifetime, mm -hmm. a book about the financial bubbles and how the author truly believes that yeah, it's doomsday <laughs> and, and about. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. I still want to read the book. I want to get his, his side of it. And I got one good takeaway of it and uh, out of it all. It was worth the eight hours of listening to it. The takeaway that I got was, listen, in markets, there's booms, there's busts. Sometimes you may be here. Sometimes you may be down there. Sure. Obviously, we all want to kind of go like this, <laughs> trend upwards throughout, but it's just not realis realistic. So related to finances and things like that is, you know, be conservative along the way. And, you know, obviously you're always gonna be investing in assets. Obviously you, uh, you, you, know, you need to be smart inside your business, but if doomsday comes, as long as you have consistent cash flow coming in on a regular basis, and as long as you have cash savings, It'll work out, you know, it'll work out fine. You know, maybe your net worth goes up, but then also it could be a time that your net worth, or goes down, maybe your net worth does go down, but there's also times that, you know, during the good times, your net, your net worth really went up. So, you know, trying to stay real focused on keeping stable cash flow inside the business and stable income. So if stuff does change dramatically, you know, everything's still kind of in place, but at the same time, you know, have good savings. You know, obviously have a lot of money in assets, in different diversified assets, real estate, stocks, businesses, right. um, tied to different things. But at the same time, you know, make sure, you know, you have a solid, solid savings account as well. Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense, especially now, because things have been good. We've been on a bull market run for a long time, both real estate and stock. Um, so now's really the time, and like, like we talk about a lot, is to, you know, keep, keep it tight and make sure the cash flow is there and the liquidity and don't get too aggressive, don't get too excited and know that markets I mean, go down. And don't and don't take on debt that debt that debt you ca that you can't problem. afford. I mean that debt will kill it. So mm -hmm. uh, you know it was the, the big the big like I said the big takeaways are consistent cash flow and even if the cash flow declines a little bit and then having and then having access to some liquidity and you know we don't have to go on and on related to this topic but there's a lot of people that Say well, if you know you always have too much liquidity and you're never in the markets, you're, you know, that's significantly bad because sure. ma maybe you know in the next few years stuff could really decline. But if you weren't in the markets years ago, you know, you, you would have doubled what you had. So whatever. So how about yourself? What was the most recent book that um, you got a good takeaway out of? I have a finance book too that um, haven't finished yet, and it's Unshakable by Tony Robbins. And now. You might be aware that Tony wrote a gigantic finance book, personal finance book, maybe a year or two ago, called Money Master the Game. And it was, what, 600, 700 pages long. And this is kind of a condensed version of that. And OK, I thought two things while I'm reading it. Maybe I'm like 2 thirds, 3 quarters of the way through. One was, I've read all this before. I read this in the big book because I fought my way through that huge thing. And the second one is, even if I've read this before, it's good to just keep that front of mind these different kinds of personal financial things just to, uh, like a refresher course yep. just to keep my brain focused on that stuff which we've been like we've talked about many times on the show we've been very focused on financial stuff but during the past few years of our career for the first several years of the company we're very very marketing focused and we still are but we we have a big finance emphasis now that's going to tie into some stuff we're going to talk about later on but that's really the takeaway from that book for me is just keep it front of mind even if I've read this before. Yeah, I'm halfway through that book right now too. And similar, <laughs> a lot of similar <laughs> stuff from the 40 hour one. I think the first audiobook caught, took me 40 hours. This one's only eight hours. Um, <laughs> and, it's, and it's very, very similar stuff. But you know, you take all these crazy 
com complex stuff and you really condense it into like one or two takeaways and it's worth the whole read itself. I mean, that's the yeah. takeaway. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about one thing inside of our business, maybe a goal or a project that you really want to try to get done before the end of 2017. Yeah, so kind of related to what we were just talking about, we've been very focused on our, on our financial game for a long time. Um, and that also applies to in-office operations and software and systems and workflow. Been very, very focused on that. And I feel like a little, uh, I feel like some of our marketing stuff was set up, you know, three, four, five years ago and it's still three, four, five years, you know. Like yeah. It hasn't, a lot of that stuff hasn't been tweaked since then. Some of it has, a lot of it hasn't. So one thing I want to do, probably around, you know, fourth quarter of this year, is to revamp some of our marketing stuff in terms of email sequences, maybe some landing pages, stuff like that that we just, you know, it's all like version 2012. Yeah, and it's uh, all relevant still, but you can yeah, take it, okay. but you can take it to the next level on it. Yeah. Yeah, so you? mine's kind of interesting. So, I really want to do a better job and organize a lot of the education that we offer to our clients for free, complete free education. I mean, think about it. You go to boot camps, you go to see Guru, Guru Speak, you buy, you buy um, courses, all that stuff. Sure. We have all that stuff and we're willing to always, always, always provide it to clients and customers and anyone who follows us for free, mm -hmm. right? So Point. I want to kind of be kind of looked at as, hey, I could go buy this course for free for a thousand, I could go buy this course for a thousand bucks, I can go to this boot camp, or I go to Hard Money Bankers, and I know that I will get the same quality, if not better, for f absolutely free, just because, you know, listen, we do a lot of stuff to promote real estate investing because we want to get loans out of it. I mean, sure. it, it's, you know, we can sit here and selfishly say that we want to do loans for investors, so the more we can help investors, the more we can do loans for it. And we have a lot of products that we've created along the way. You know, originally there were products that we sold that we're happy to, you know, give away for, you know, free, yeah. free at this, this point. We just need to catalog them, we need to organize them. A lot of the content's already in there because a lot of content in real estate investing doesn't change year after year. Um, strategy things, Where do you want raising money. I wanna, I wanna house it probably on hard money bankers and, you know, be hard money bankers, you know, education. And I think most outsiders looking in are gonna think like, oh cool, what's the catch? If I put my email address in, um, you know, it will, you know wh how much will it cost me for a course? And I think the entire yeah, purpose is, uh, yeah, the entire purpose of it is, yeah, we're gonna collect someone's email address. We want an email address because we feel we can give you relevant information our, over over time and we wanna make sure we're in front of you when you're ready to apply for a loan and you need money for, for one of these deals. But I think we could do a better log, a better, way of uh, cataloging all the information, setting up by course, and maybe even get a program in there to really organ organize it great for us. So, hey, next time you need more information on how to wholesale, you're coming to Hard Money Bankers and getting uh, whatever, th thousands and thousands of dollars of information for free, instead of going to one to this guru, or this guru, or this guru, or, guru or boot camp, or boot camp, whatever it is, right? We have all that information because we've already done it, right? We've already done it, yeah, we, already have we can, all, you know, we'll tweak it, but I think it's a real added benefit for a lot of people, and especially since, you know, there's a lot of newer real estate investors out there right now trying to get information. Um, happy, to provide, happy to provide it for free, so towards the end, I'm, I'm guessing like right after the end of the summer, maybe like September start working on that project and hopefully I'll get that done to the end of the year. That's a good one. All right, next one. What's one, if you had to pick one, a line of business or an extension of our business that you would implement and go after if you had to do one? And not that we do, but if you had to choose. Another yeah, I mean, we've tried. We, we've stayed pretty razor focused on a lot of stuff, and we've mm -hmm. tried to move into. Hey, let's maybe this, maybe this. You know what I've liked kind of recently that we've done once, twice on kind of a basis is like business consulting um, and helping business owners or even hard money lenders. We actually helped hard money. We actually helped a hard money lender in another market who couldn't, com you know, didn't compete with us. Um, run the business. You know, they were already a successful hard money lender. They had money. They knew what they were doing. You know, I'm not, we're not personally like coaching and co coaching, I'm not interested in, you know, follow-up coaching. It's just kind of more of like someone comes and they're like, hey, I really need help restructuring my business. 
and you know someone can pay for like a one or two day consulting. Uh, that's interesting, but they got to be a successful. They have to be a successful business owner already. Like I don't want to do yeah, it. Some, I, w- yeah, I wouldn't want to do it unless they were successful. Yeah, it can't be startup time. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's an interesting one because we haven't. We don't promote that at all. Like that, those few times that we've done consulting, like a two day consulting thing for a flat fee, just really came about because people reached out to us. And yeah. Said like, hey, you know, I would con- I would like to pay to know what you guys know, um, or to like restructure like beginning to end like let's look at the marketing stuff let's look at operations look at your finance game and those are heavy days though you know like they're they're full on like there's a lot of brain damage that goes on (coughs) when you're planning all that out and when you're implementing things and answering questions and working closely with somebody for you know 48 hours straight well not exactly 48 hours two business days Um, but yeah I think it's an easy extension for our business I think we learn a lot too when we go through that process Um, we don't have to travel for it, which is nice. It would be done here. And, you, and I mean, we put a lot, We, you know, when we've done it, we've just put everything into it. So it's like, mm-hmm. let's take your brain and move it into this. And, you know, it's interesting because looking back, we've, you know, we've paid companies 10000 15000 $25,000. You know, we did stuff when we overhauled our entire FusionSoft CRM account. True. We paid companies to do, uh, you know, like Russell Brunson's Mastermind where we did you know, like something called like a decade in a day, and it's just it's ongoing intensives. We and we've done other we've done other stuff similar to yeah. that that we that we traveled through, and you know I don't think that like that was our original goal is to do some of that stuff, but and I don't think that we'll probably even market for it. I think if someone <laughs> reached out to us and said, "Hey, I want I, can you help me with the, this business stuff?" and the reason why um, I think this is on top of our mind right right now, and why we both probably came up with that is that recently came up again. If right. someone was like, I right. know real estate, I'm great at real estate. I do a lot of deals, I own a lot of properties, I have plenty of capital. That being said, like my business organization is awful. Right. I don't know how to hire, I don't know how to fire. I have 10 or eight, I think in this case, eight people in my organization and they all overlap on everything. And I don't know how to get out of that. Right. So I don't it's know, a common thing. it's interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's a common thing for, for business owners to be good at their trade, but they find that running an organization is a different animal and a different skill yeah. set. And yeah, like Jason said, we, we've paid good money to shortcut a lot of that process by learning from people who know better and who are much bigger and you know, more effective. And yeah, it's a good thing. It's, um, I would also say that would be the, the easiest extension or add on to what yeah. we have going on currently that would provide a lot of value, but it would be manageable for us because we do have our hands full and, of what we have going on. And it's good people that you hang out with. I mean, anyone who's right. at that level in their yeah. business, I want to network with. Totally. I mean, that's the people that we've always wanted in our sphere. So I don't even think most, I th- a lot of this may not even be real estate investors, just small business owners. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, like we always say, we're business owners and entrepreneurs that are in the real estate business. You know, the real estate is the, it's just the, the product, the niche that we're, that we're in. So cool. All good stuff, all interesting stuff. Yep, Ho- yep. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. Uh, any questions that you have along the way, comment below underneath these videos. It'll be on iTunes, it'll be on YouTube. Uh, it'll be contributed to some of the uh, places that we, that we post articles and videos to. It'll be on our blog and everything like that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Comment, share, subscribe. Until next time. <laughs>